So just waking up at the hotel here on the final day. Today is get back home day. So by one o'clock today, we've got to be at least on our way to the boat. So we'll see what we can do between now and then. I'm going to hang, head up the coast like to Chuang, Chuang Beach, and uh, we'll find something to eat. And there's another place I want to stop at too on the far north side of the island. So we'll make some stops on the way. We're leaving the Sawan Mali Hotel. Good. It was a good visit here. We spent two nights here at the hotel. Let's head out. Hey folks, we will be returning back to Pattaya today. We will be getting back on the ship. At the end of the episode, I'll show you how to book, how to book your passage on the ship and explain all that to you. There was quite a few questions about all that, but we've still got about four or five hours to kill. So let's see as much of the island as we can before we have to go. So it occurred to me, once I got about 10 minutes away, I hadn't had a cup of coffee yet this morning. So many places like this in Samui. I just stopped up here on the cliff at the Vicasa Resort. It's, a, it's actually a yoga resort, it looks like, but they've got a, a brilliant cafe called the Life Cafe with, with just stunning views. And it, it, this is a place, some people have asked about this for like vegan offerings. I, I looked at the menu, the menu's online when you, when you get there. Everything's clearly marked. I think uh, at least half, a lot of, a whole lot of vegan offerings, and they're all clearly marked uh, for vegetarians and, and so forth. But we'll just get a, a get a cappuccino. But there's so many places like this along here in Samui, which is stunning views. I don't know which is the best one, but uh, I had a good cappuccino, so now I'm ready to continue up the coast. So I made it up to Chuang Beach and really smack dab in the middle of Chuang Beach. I just happened to pun this place. It's part of the Avani uh, Beach Resort here. Beautiful place, just gorgeous. I, if I come back here, I, I, might, I might choose to stay here. I'll walk you through here, just beautiful. I don't know how many pools I saw, at least three swimming pools and direct beach access and beautiful restaurant, got a cafe. They were setting up the breakfast buffet, it looked like. Uh, wow, wonderful place, just so picturesque. A fine choice I just kind of happened to see because there's public beach access here. Uh, this, this road that runs uh, kind of the service road to the resort ends at the beach, it's public beach access. That's where I was really going, but I didn't realize this place was here. It's just a phenomenal resort. It looks so well maintained. Last time we were here, even the McDonald's was closed, even, even here at Chuang. Uh, and that was the case at Lamai back in May. We were here in May after bike week. We came down here on our little route. We stopped at a couple other places, but this was, uh, I think, our last stop on that trip. And I remember it seemed so depressed because even the McDonald's were closed. Well, in Lamai, of course, the McDonald's open. The sign out front said 24 hours. We'll see about Chuang. It seems like it's a slower recovery here, but definitely, definitely a lot maybe, wow, five times more going on this time here. What's that, five months ago? Uh, June, July, August, September, October. Yeah, roughly five months. It, it seems like, uh, yeah, easily five times the amount going on. Uh, tourists, things open, et cetera. So they're, they're definitely recovering. But this resort doesn't look crowded at all. I have to see how much it is. <laughs> So I rode all the way through Chuang. Uh, it seemed like there was more traffic in Lamai, to be honest. Uh, still a little bit better than last time, though, we were here. But speaking of last time, this place that I'm at now was on my list last time, but I never made it. That's, that's kind of how it goes. I don't get to do everything. But this time, it's up a hilltop. It's a windy, steep road up here to the cocoon 
the cocoon, and just a great view. You can actually look down and see the planes landing and taking off a view right of the airport, a view of the big pagoda we were at last time, all of Chuang Beach. You can just see the whole, the whole joint from up here. So I ordered up a little brekkie, gorgeous place. Not all, not all that big. Uh, not all that big, but big enough. And very, very, very classy inside for this hilltop. It just sits perfectly on one little piece of land at the top of the hill. You come and go different ways. So we came up one, one side of the hill, we'll eat. And then when I go down the other side of the hill, that'll be a whole different exit. Because there's not much land, just one little ledge. You see how it's kind of supported. <laughs> There's just no more land. Uh, there's just no more land for it to sit on. But anyway, beautiful view up here. We'll, uh, we'll look at the food when it comes, and we'll uh, we'll go up to this other place that I want to go to on the far north side of the island. So this is where I wanted to come on the top side of the island, Bowput, Bowput Beach, and specifically Fisherman's Village. It almost feels like a walking street, although there are there is vehicular traffic, but it's very, very slow going and narrow, and there's just shops on both sides of the road, restaurants, resorts, everything imaginable, a lot of souvenir clothing shops, places to eat, little bars, a nice little strip here. But the, the far north end of the island. And I wanted to come here as well last time, just didn't have time to work everything in, but there's some very nice resorts here as well. Uh, I'll show you just right across from the beach and a, a very nice looking beach again. So scenic here. There's so many nice areas on Gulf Samoa. I'm very surprised with that. I guess it's not a surprise, more of a, just, just more of a wow factor everywhere you go. There's something beautiful to look at. Like look at this place. Uh, you know, these, these are all up and down here, places just like this. So. The one I'm going to up here is called Summer. Uh, the reason I'm going to that one is it looked, I don't know, looked maybe the most scenic. And there was a place to park my bike. Parking's at a premium here. And there's even paid lots, but I found like a public beach access and some parking. So that's where I parked and then I walked down here. I'm on the way walking back. <laughs> All right, we'll get something to eat at Summer. How about that place, summer, huh? Look at that. Great. That that that's something like something I've never seen before. So they made a berry smoothie, a very thick, a berry smoothie, and then they covered it with all kind of I don't know, fruit and mueslicks and nuts and granola and stuff like that. It's quite a quite a meal. Fruit bowl smoothie. <laughs> it's about one o'clock now. This ship leaves at four. Ideally, you want to be there by two. I got to stop and get some gas. I thought I had enough gas, but I did a lot more riding around Lamai and stuff than I thought. So we'll go get some gas and then uh, we'll uh, get back on the ship and go back to Pattaya. Boy, I kind of want to stay here longer. Everywhere I look, everywhere I look is something beautiful to discover. Look at all this.
made it back aboard the ship, no problems. Now, I showed you this on the very first video. When you go to check in and sat the hip, there's a building actually before you even get to the ship that you check in and they give you your tickets and everything. In, in Gossamui, it's not that way. You go right up to the ship. They've fashioned a little table, a little desk, uh, right at, at the mouth of the car, cargo hold. And there's a couple ladies there that will check you in, give you your ticket. So it's uh, one-stop shopping here in Gossamui. And we're leaving right on time. It's 4 p.m. And we're saying goodbye to Gossamui. That was the prescribed time. So this goes both ways. Um, I've kind of concentrated more on the Patia de Samui uh, angle, but really if you live here and you wanted to go say to Ko Chang or something like that, it would be a terrible drive. You could take this on a Sunday, you arrive on a Monday morning, drive down to Ko Chang, I mean you have your car, your bike, whatever, drive down to Ko Chang, spend Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, back up to South the Hip, onto the ship, and you're back home in Samui Friday morning. Something like that. That's just one example, but that could be applied a lot of different ways. Or maybe uh, three, four days in Patea, whatever. So, a couple other little housekeeping things. So, if you book just a standard ticket, or even if you do what I did and get the, the sleeping pod, you need to bring your own towel. Uh, they do not have towels for you. There's a, a shower, so you can uh, shower stalls, you can get a shower, that's all included. There's soap and shampoo in there, you don't have to bring that. Uh, you'll have to bring toothpaste, toothbrush, the other toiletries, and a towel, because they won't have a towel. Uh, there's a hand dryer in the, in the bathroom, but I don't think you can dry your whole body with that. <laughs> so there we go, I will, uh, I will be back in Patia tomorrow morning, we'll set the hip. And I'll ride back up to Patia. But what a great, what a great couple days in Gossamui. I, I guess it's official now. We've officially left now. But what a great couple days in Gossamui. Wow. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I could live there. Everything's a little bit more expensive. But uh, such a gorgeous place. And the island's big enough. Plenty of places to go and see and do and eat. And, wow. Feel like you could. Uh, feel like I could spend a month there and. Uh, do something different every day. Anyway, that's all it's going to be. So I'm going to take you through the entire booking process here in a minute. There were a lot of questions on that, and I'll show you how to do it. But in the meantime, if you're looking for something to watch tomorrow, Saturday the 5th, 10 p.m. Bangkok time, I'll be a guest on the Richard Travel Show. Live interview and some Q&A, so stop on by and say hi. I'll put a link in the description below. But here's how to book. The way their preferred way to book is through one of the Messenger apps and I'll go through both of those. That is exactly how I booked. I'll, I'll show you the, the entire process. But in short, you'll tell them you want a book. They will ask you to send a, I don't know, a copy of your ID, passport, and green book of your vehicle. But anyway, this is where I started. Uh, the Seahorse Ferry Facebook page. There's a link right there to send them a message, which I clicked on. I'll even show you the messages that went back and forth. Now, they didn't respond to my initial message right away. It took several minutes, and I got bored, so I added them to Line. I'll show you how to do that, and I actually booked through the Line Messenger app, but I could have waited. You see, they sent me a response, both Thai and English. They sent me the details, but at that point, I told them, hey, I'm already booking on the Line app, so I'll show you how that came about. Their link to their to their line QR code is right on their Facebook page. And I'll put, I'll put the uh, QR code up here in a minute. You'll be able to scan it right from the screen if you want. But that's how I did that. I added them to line. They responded to line much quicker. I was almost finished booking online before they responded back to the Facebook. So and like I said, you'll send a copy of your ID, your green book, you'll pay with your banking app. They'll send you a PDF of your booking. So in speaking to uh, other passengers on, on board, some of them were going to Patia. They've elected to take this ship for a week, for their last week, to spend in Koh Samui, then fly back to Bangkok, then back home. I, I, I think the ship is more than transportation to Koh Samui. The ship is an entire experience. It, it's, it's being out at sea. It's waking up at sea. It's enjoying the, enjoying the little nightlife they have on the ship and the whole experience. And then, of course, it's about enjoying Koh Samui when you get there. I spent one evening here a little bit at the, at the Rolling Stone live music here. Great, uh, great little venue. So the ship did end up docking back at Sat the Hip about 8 a.m. in the morning. I went back to Patia, where there is plenty to do as V and I prepare for our upcoming big trip to India, which is just less than a week away. So we've got a lot to do about that. But anyway, 
something new next time, but for this one, gotta leave it off right here. And as usual, I'll thank you for watching. And until next time, bye for now. Bye.